Good morning. Today I want to share with you a short video on grape structure and berry development. So without further ado, let's go to the presentation. Okay, so at a mature state, um, our berry would look something like this um, with um, several different parts to it. So the skin, out here or the epidermis on a red grape would be red and the flesh inside or the pulp would normally be white, although there are some varieties that have a red fr uh, flesh. And then uh, in addition, we would have a couple of seeds in here normally, just two, but there can be more or less depending on fertilization as we discussed in the previous video. So the Berry then is fed by um, a xylem and phloem tissue that comes in here and feeds this berry with sugar and water, um, mostly sucrose that then gets broken down into glucose and fructose that's stored in the vacuoles of the cells in the pulp, which is mostly where uh, the sugars are stored. And the skin has color. This red-purple color comes from a pigment called anthocyanins. Uh, green grapes obviously do not have that. They have chlorophyll there uh, and no anthocyanins are produced. In the berry stem here, is, it is called the pedicel, as we see over here in terms of the structure. Uh, in the terms of the grape cluster, we have um, the rachis is this part of the structure here, uh, the stem, and then we have lateral branches with our berries forming off. The main branch that comes off of the cane or stem of the, of the shoot is called the peduncle. Okay, throughout this tissue, it's fed by these vascular bundles uh, that feed the different cells with water and sugar. So this is the last slide. Uh, but it's very comprehensive slide that has lots of information on it. So in the beginning of the season, we start off with very small berries after fruit set. Uh, and those berries grow in size very rapidly in the first phase of growth where there's lots of cell division. And then we enter into a lag phase where there's very little increase in the development size of the, of the berry. And at one point, we start to get berry softening and a change in color. And this is known as veraison. Uh, that change in color may be to a lighter green for green grapes or into red or colors and purple colors, black colors um, as we mature. And during this period, there's a rapid increase in size of the berry. So this is known as the ripening phase, the third phase of berry development. In this slide also, you can see uh, a listing of what compounds are, are synthesized and in what particular developmental stage. So we see that tartaric acid and tannins are uh, developed very early in the very early stages of berry development. Hydroxysynamase, which is uh, something that feeds into the tannins. Methoxypyrazine, which is a compound that's involved in the bell pepper um, aroma of some grapes such as Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Sauvignon. Malate reaches its peak synthesis right just before veraison and after that it begins to decline. Glucose and fructose begin to accumulate in the berry so they are synthesized as sucrose in the leaves transported through the phloem to the berries and then the apoplast, which is outside the cell, there's an enzyme called invertase that breaks down that into glucose and fructose, and there are transporters that take it up into the cell and store it in the vacuole. Later on, we start to get anthocyanin development, and only in the latter periods do we see a large increase in flavor type compounds. So there may be some increases earlier on, but the majority of these increases um, occur in the late stages of berry development. Many of these are glycosylated forms that you can't taste right now in the fresh berry, 
but when uh, you go through fermentation, uh, not only do some of these precursors get converted into other volatile compounds and flavors, but uh, some of these flavors get released because the glucose, the glycosylated form, the glucose is removed from the molecule, which makes it more volatile and flavorful. Okay, along this axis as well, we see sugars, uh, as indicated here by BRICS, which actually stands for soluble solids, but it's largely sugars. And we see that the BRICS level just before raisin was around four, it may be around six at raisin, and then it starts to rapidly increase from seven to 10 to 14 to 18, where your table grapes might be picked, to 22 and to about 25 is about the maximum that you're going to get in uh, berry development. Anything higher than that, and you're starting to see a little bit of shrinkage going on in the berry. So these higher accumulations of sugar are the result of berry shrinkage. That's it for now, and stay tuned for future videos on when to harvest your grapes and more on plant identification and cultivar identification.